guy. Alrighty, folks, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your late night SmackDown Live review. Uh, didn't really give a fuck about this show tonight. Didn't really care. Um, but apparently people were saying this draw. I don't know, the SmackDown was like, whatever. I remember I woke up around fucking 8.20, so I missed, like, Whatever, and then I had to go to the gym because I, uh, I was running out of time and I was supposed to go to the gym earlier. So I woke up late and then I decided, you know, fuck it, I have to go to the gym and I rushed. And then I left like between the match with Andre, Cien, Almas, and fucking Rey Mysterio. And apparently all they have his name as Andre now or something. I don't fucking know. Andre didn't or something. It's just like whatever. And for some reason, like literally, this is what happened. Right when I got got to my fucking gym, I hear some fucking guy. Apparently, he's like an employee. He was, uh, he was wearing like an employee shirt. I said, "Oh my god!" He was like on the floor, like, "Oh my god! Did you see the? Uh, oh my god! You should. Uh, you missed the. Uh, you missed a, a match with Andre Almas or something with fucking Rey Mysterio. Like he's like some fucking fan of wrestling or something." I don't know, he looked like, he didn't look like, he didn't, he didn't look like the real small fucker. He wasn't, the, he wasn't a big, strong motherfucker. He was just like an employee. He didn't look like he fucked big, big black couch. But it is what it is. But, you know, yeah, it's like, why is he watching wrestling? But, I don't know, I was like, why are you going crazy over some match with Andre Almas or something with Rey Mysterio? Like, is that really a match to fucking give a shit about? But especially where there's no fucking story. So that inspired me to watch, uh, of course, I try to watch that match when I got home to try to, like, get the understanding. But the thing is, we already knew that I had no story, so what's the point of even caring about the match? But whatever, let's see how it is. I was just, uh, so right now it's like 2 o'clock. And, like, yeah, I came home at 11. And so, yeah. Now I can find, well, uh, yeah, and I was, I've been waiting to fucking drink my fucking Coca-Cola wine glass. So, yeah, let's go. Oh shit, oh shit. It's good stuff. I love it. I love it. It's good stuff. This is my fucking this is the this is what you need. You want you want pre workout motherfuckers? This is your pre workout. It's good stuff. Pre workout and post workout. Mm mm. Keep you fucking the caffeine. You wanna know you wanna know you have to stop making those you know what? Stop taking those stupid pre-work supplements. You can still take your whey protein shakes and whatever the fuck. But if you want something to fucking keep it going, for fucking like pre-workout and crap, this is the ultimate fucking pre-workout, motherfuckers. Good stuff. Of course, don't drink it really before when you work out and fucking when you're working out and after working out. Like wait until like let's say 30 minutes before you work out and then like yeah, like you know don't drink it with your pre-work with your fucking you know, pre-workout protein shakes or something, and post-workout protein shakes. What you guys should really do, let's say, if you're going to work out, for fuck's sake, you know, you, yeah, you take your protein, you know, you drink it the whole day if you want. If you're a soda-holic, and when it's time to work out, you got to get to the fucking gym, you fucking, 30 minutes, you fucking drink your fucking protein shakes, and whatever the fuck, you work your ass off, drink some water, water is good stuff. Well, you know, you get you gotta be a little hydrated with just drinking some good old soda if you want to enjoy the nice soda and wine glass. And then, yeah, and after that, you fucking take your fucking workout, a post workout shake, and you wait like an hour. And yeah, you can enjoy that's the life of the soul hog working out day. So, yeah, it's good stuff. Plus, eating pro, you know, six meals a day or six, seven, eat as much as you can. That's good stuff. That's why it took so long also because I was freaking eating my fucking prep meal, so it's good stuff, so. So the show starts with Trini Lynch or some reason and like apparently she was pulling out of a fucking SUV or something. I don't fucking care. And yeah, they're just talking about fucking Oscar or something. I don't fucking know. Apparently the new new day are there with pancakes and stuff and then the fucking team called Heavy Machinery, Tucker Knight and Otis Dozovic. Apparently that's the dude who's who was going, you know, who interrupted the Lex Bliss segment from yesterday. And again, ironically, guess what, motherfuckers? You guys say that, you know, people don't give a shit about hotness? For fuck's sake, fucking Alexa Bliss just showing her fucking, just being topless. Fucking her road to her malfunction, spiked views for YouTube. So for y'all motherfuckers that say don't give a shit about fucking hot women, eh, eh, like, what does that tell you? 
Again, that should tell you no one gives a flying fuck about women's wrestling. Stop portraying women's wrestling as big time because nobody gives a flying fuck. No one gives a shit about Becky Lynch or her stupid fucking goddamn fucking on demand. Yeah, because you know why? Because she's literally a fucking man. She's trans. She's a fucking transgender. That's who the fuck she is. And it sounds like a fucking man. She's disgusting. She's horrible. She's gar awful. She's garbage. So fuck her. And she ain't attractive at all. Like what the fuck? She literally looks like a man, and actually sounds like one for fuck's sakes. She has a, all she has is just a stupid red. And she has her fucking stupid orange hair, like Ronald McDonald or something. No, no, fucking Irish shames or whatever. Fuck, it's garbage. Say it's really fucking gay how you started the show, and then Becky Lynch comes out and whatever, and the Oscar and her have a fucking face off, and no one gives a flying fuck. All right, and then like literally, they walk up later on this time, I believe, like Becky Lynch fucking makes Pretty Royce tap out, and no one fucking cares, and then Oscar defeats fucking. Billy K and no one fucking cares about that fucking match. No one gives a flying fuck about this, ladies and gentlemen. And then Styles came out all of a sudden, wasting everybody's time uh, fucking during this. Like, at least it's, you know what, it's better than fucking looking at these two disgusting she hogs Oscar and fucking Becky Lynch. And fucking, yeah, so they, she, he interrupts them and then just basically walks through the fucking ring for no reason. But, you know, it's like, whatever. And then he walks through the fucking crowd. It's like, really retarded, but it's like, whatever, I don't care. And the fucking, he goes to the backstage and has fucking sodas and junk food ready or something like that. And, yeah. And then... Yeah, basically, he's just uh, saying that the fans gonna get food or something. I don't fucking, I don't fucking care, really. All you need to know is, like, this leads to fucking Brian and having a brawl back at, on... In the fucking concession stand and stuff. It's like whatever, but it's like I don't really care, you know. It's just like don't. This will only benefit like the build up so far should benefit to like let's say a nose qualification match at fucking Royal Rumble. Cause if it's just the same fucking match, it's boring and no one's gonna fucking care. It makes no sense, like you know, it's just uh. Then the Usos backstage with a photo shoot, and then Chuck Jimmy Usos is delivered a gift, perhaps an early anniversary present. Jay Uso reads the note to him, and it's a it's from a naughty girl who needs to be locked up in the Uso Penitentiary. It's signed by Randy Rose, not Naomi. A hotel key card is included. Jay asks Jimmy if he wants what he's gonna do now. What are you gonna talk now? What are you gonna talk now? You're about to find out. We're about to find out. Um, we see Samoa Joe backstage walking. We see EC3 posing in a mirror to the side. Joe keeps walking. We go to commercial. I'm guessing all the fucking TNA motherfuckers like, oh, she has the vision. She has the vision. Like, fuck you. Oh yeah, apparently Lacey Evans or something was watching the women's match. I don't fucking care. Um, Caleb Braxton is, is back to his Elena Vega. Andre Cien Almas is now being called Andre 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 or Andre Andr Andrade Andrade. That's his name now. So uh, he goes to the he now. So Andrade Cien Almas, well now Andrade is basically part of the Miss Mr McMahon's cut the name in half list. So it's like whatever. Yeah, you might as well fucking, yeah, so like, you have the fucking parentheses with CN, why not just call him CN or something, but yeah, you just call him, I don't fucking care, I don't care, why, like, who fucking cares about this guy, and why do people like this guy, Literally, the only reason why we, we should care about this motherfucker is fucking Selena Vega, why would fucking the big black cat make her go, oh shit, oh shit, that's it, that's it, no one's gonna fucking give a shit about this fucking job or Andrade CN Albus or whatever the fuck, I don't fucking care. So Mojo versus Mustafa Ali and the match never happened or something and just fucking Mojo de destroying Mustafa Ali and I would like it if fucking Must if fucking Samojo actually did what he did to fucking Tyson Kidd. But no, he have to fucking it's just fucking all oh, just an attack. It would have been nice if fucking Samojo could be like a hero of America and save us from a fucking bomber, you know? A lot bar! 
It would've been nice, motherfuckers. We got saved from fucking guys like Mustafa Ali, ladies and gentlemen. Ain't good stuff, motherfuckers. Ain't good stuff. And before y'all say it, I'm not Indian, though. I'm really not, though. And I'm not terrorist, though. I'm, not, I'm really not, though. As well. Just because I'm just an American, Muslim American nationalism, motherfuckers. Ah. Then Sonya Deville is backstage for Mandy. And then fucking Deville asks Rose if she really wants to go through this hotel thing. He's saying it's scandalous. And Rose really doesn't like Naomi and says that if she can make. She's gonna make her life. And Naomi's life miserable by breaking up their marriage or something. I don't know. It's like whatever. We see Rivers through walking by and see fucking Nikki Cross. It's like whatever. Again, like I already said what I have to say about Nikki Cross during my raw review yesterday. Just, just she just really just fucking. She's supposed to like, her and like the Sandy group supposed to be oh we're we're crazy we're we're we're, we're crazy we're we're fucking psychos or something. Yet they're fucking cornball goofy motherfuckers. That's literally all they are. They make goofy faces. I'm crazy, man. I'm crazy. And ain't nobody go fuck Nikki Cross and be black house, ladies and gentlemen. Ugh, fuck. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Fucking Ray. Okay. What is it? The Doink match or something? I don't know how many matches. I'm just gonna say the match. Andrade defeated Rey Mysterio. And I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I know a lot of people are probably saying. I, I, I'll i say it. Yeah, sure. So I did look back on the match on YouTube after fucking when I was done with the gym and shit. And I did watch the match. And I ain't gonna lie. The match was actually not bad. It was a good match. It kind of reminded me in a way of a cruiserweight match. It, like an old school cruiserweight match. I would give it because especially Rey Mysterio and stuff. Some good moves were in the match. You know, f it was pretty good. I ain't gonna lie. It was a good match. For, it probably is. Yeah, it's match of the night. In terms of a wrestling match, yeah. But there was no story. So it defeats the purpose of what wrestling should be. You know, we could see all these... Here's the thing. We could all, always see all these good matches where it fuck. But if they have no story, what's the fucking purpose? You know, it takes away the purpose of, rad, of professional wrestling. Professional wrestling is about characters and stories, ladies and gentlemen. And the build up to the match. You know, there should at least fucking be some interaction with each other. Oh, there were some interaction. Some stupid shit, stupid tag match. Who fucking cares? Do you at least fucking make it more or like fucking... More relevant to actually people. Why, why should this happen for fuck's sake? But it's whatever. I give it that. The match was actually good. So there you go. So you guys got me to fucking say a match that is good. Okay, there you go. So yeah, it was a good match. I'll say that. And what, what was really good too, just seeing Selena Vega and a fucker in a big black cast go, oh shit, oh shit, you know? Yeah, and Andrade won because of fucking Selena Vega distracting Ray. The match was a competitive, it was really good, you know, it was cruiserweight, a cruiserweight action, but again, you know, like, what more can you go with if just a wrestling match being good, you know? It's just not always going to benefit. Like, you know, there might, yeah, a good match, but like, what's the story? Why like, should I really care? Like, will I really care about this match? Like, it's just a match, you know? Will I really remember this match in a few weeks by now? You know? The best matches are the ones that you remember the story of, the build up to. And like, you know, there could be many matches in the world and there could be good, but like, how the fuck are you, you know, they could have like, but the thing is, I believe they face each other a second, t this is like their second or third fucking time they face each other in a one on one match. And all of a sudden, this is like the best match they have or something, sure, but like, well, just because it's a, ma you know, they face each other. And apparently they have a good match. Is it really good? Be uh, is it really a good match to be remembered for like time to time? You know, a real, a actual good match is something you remember for years to come or something. Just saying, but it's whatever. It is what it is. See, the match was good. I'll give it that. Then after that, Jimmy Uso enters a, a Mandy Rose's hotel room, and Rose is sitting down. And for fuck's sakes. Manny Rose, ladies and gentlemen, for fuck's sake, it's really, oh shit, oh shit, fuck, is, is women's wrestling, is real women's wrestling coming back, people, seriously, is real women's wrestling, actual women's wrestling with hotness, for fuck's sakes, fucking Alexa Bliss being topless, uh, but, you know, not showing her fucking top, but, like, you know, her, her fucking tits, but, like, you know, she's being topless, even though it's, like, stupid tease, but it's something... 
fucking Mandy Rose is but also Mandy Rose looking seductive. Fucking be in a lingerie for fuck's sakes. Fucking Mandy Rose sitting down on a fucking couch. You know what? Fuck, Mandy Rose, you're invited to my big black couch. I'll make you go, oh shit, oh shit, you know? You want to sit in a black couch? Sit in my. Not fucking black couch, but it was a fucking. Whatever the fuck couch he is. You know what? I have a black couch. We can go, oh shit, all we want. For fuck's sakes. She was on a couch waiting for Jimmy and fucking she, uh, she strips it to a fucking lingerie. It's fucking amazing. It's fucking. She's fucking hot as hell. Whew. And like, and I, unfortunately, I missed this, but like, I had to watch it online. But I'm telling you, oh my goodness, mm, beautiful. It's like, wow, woman, real woman's wrestling people, and that just show. Yeah, oh, it's sexist. It's misogynistic. So yeah, five minutes of fucking woman being hot, a woman segment for doing something that fucking people actually give a fuck about. That's a problem. We can't have that shit when literally they're doing what you fucking motherfucker smarks want. Your shitty woman's wrestling. They're doing what the fuck you want, but we can't have like five minutes for what for what real men want for fuck's sake. Real actual web wrestling fans for fuck's sakes. Give me a fucking break. Like, that's real woman's wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. That's good stuff. That's good stuff right there. Fucking Mandy Rose being seductive in a lingerie. When was the longest, last time you see a woman in a lingerie, for fuck's sakes? God, she looked fucking amazing. And she knows this is what wrestling fans want, ladies and gentlemen. That's fucking good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. That's good stuff. Um... Jimmy was being reluctant, and then fucking, there was like a camera guy took a picture in attempts of, I don't know, in attempts of doing something. But then Mandy Rose uh, made, it, made it clear that she doesn't really want Jimmy because, uh, yeah, it was just to make Naomi angry. But then fucking Jimmy brings Naomi, and they have a cat fight. As much as I hate fucking Naomi, and I think she's fucking disgusting. Okay, literally, fucking Naomi looks like the hipster predator for fuck's sake. Hipster. But she's hipster and shit, you know? Imagine Predator being a hipster and shit, fucking you know, hippie hippie, what the, yo, yo, what the fuck, man, I'm rappy, like, whatever, like, fuck you. But, like, for fuck's sakes, yeah, like, Naomi's disgusting, you know? okay, for fuck, but for, I'm telling you, this was good, this is what women's wrestling should be, though, cat fights, there was a cat fight for fuck's sakes. And cat fight in a fucking hotel room in a bed and shit, it would be nice if it was, like, an attractive woman, let's say, fucking... Who's in the other attract? Maybe Lana. Fucking Mandy Rose and Lana. Imagine that. That will be something. Imagine fucking Mandy Rose was trying to be seductive to Rusev. That's what Rasson should be, ladies and gentlemen. Holy shit. I would believe it if she was trying to be... I don't know. But like I'm saying, that's what fucking it should have been. Fucking Mandy Rose and Lana fucking cat fight being hot. That's fucking great stuff. But in general, for fucking... This is what Ra At least a step in the right direction. This is what fucking wrong with women's wrestling is supposed to be. This is real women's wrestling. Mandy Rose being hot, looking hot and seductive. That's what women's wrestling should be. That's what women should do. That's what draws ratings. That's why people give a flying fuck about it. I'm telling you, when fucking W. I, yeah, they already uploaded the shit on YouTube. And I'm getting. I'm guaranteeing you, it's gonna spike in views. A million viewers and like that. That's what happened with Alexa Bliss. Now, expect it with Mandy Rose. It's fucking good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. It's good stuff. And yeah, there was a cat fight, and like in the end, fucking Mandy just, uh, Jimmy just stopped Naomi or something. It was a cat fight, but you know, Mandy Rose didn't really get beat up, but you know, they beat up each, they beat Chato up. It was good stuff. It was good stuff. It would've been nice though if fucking Naomi wasn't in it, but hey, I'm not complaining. At least we got Mandy Rose. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Then the main event segment, I believe, or something. It was something with fucking... Okay, this was really fucking gay, though. So we got something from really fucking hot to really fucking gay. So only, like, really one fucking great thing from a show. Okay? To fucking gay shit. So we get fucking Miz doing a fucking birthday party celebration for Shane McMahon. Like, sure, yeah, happy birthday, Shane, you know, you know, some good stuff, whatever. But this is really fucking gay, Okay? Can you stop? Oh, listen, as much as I hate the Miz, what makes people hate the Miz more is him being a face. You're literally trying to make the Miz the face. What's worse than the Miz being a heel is literally Miz being a face for Fox things. This is fucking gay. This shit was fucking gay. Holy fuck! So he tries to be fucking. 
I don't care. I didn't watch. I didn't care. I don't fucking care. And all I need to know is apparently fucking the bar came out because they fucked each other in the bar and they're gay. Which makes it more gayer. Fucking The Miz defeated fucking Sheamus in the, ma in the main event. And then fucking Shane McMahon fucking did it coast to coast, which is something. It can't, wait, it just, the Sheamus, okay. Coast to cake? What the fuck? It's like, whatever. So yeah, that was the main event. Sure, so, yeah, happy birthday, Shano, but, you know, just, okay, cool, you know, you know, Shane does a cool thing. Shane is, like, probably the only person in this that, that people give a fuck about, but, like, it's like, whatever. So overall, to be honest, the only thing, it's just like, okay. It's not as cringeworthy, I would say that. At least you don't have a gay twink winning in the main event and becoming a number one contender for you for the WWE title, even though you kind of do have a gay fucking twink in the... Or yes, Shane for example, Daniel Bryan. But I would say this, I'd rather have Daniel Bryan. I, you know, I like... Bryan is better than Balor, okay? But here's the thing, I mean, for, because of Brian, he led the way to fucking guys like Balor in, in the main events and crap. So fuck him for that. But I, I'd rather have fucking guys like Brian. At least Brian has a fucking character now. You know, he actually has a character. It's stupid and gay, but it's like, it's at least a character. Brian is so much better than this. So he, yes, yes, yes. It's so much better. But, you know, for, honestly... The show isn't actually that bad at all. I'll say, I'll give it that. The show isn't actually that bad. You fucking got Mandy Rose who saved the fucking show with her hotness, being seductive and being in that fucking lingerie. And you had fucking, you know, the fucking Cruiserweight style match with Ray and fucking Andrade with Zelena Vega. Mandy Rose is definitely number one. And yeah, I guess Shane McMahon doing coast. It's just like whatever. This show is just whatever. It's not the worst, I guess. I'll say it. I'll give it. I'll be generous to say it's not the worst. SmackDown. It's just like whatever. I don't really care. Maybe because I didn't really watch the whole thing, but I don't fucking care. That's all I'm gonna have to say, honestly. So yeah, SmackDown. Not the worst, but it's like whatever. All you need to know is it says Manny Rose saved the show, and that's what people give a fuck about. That's real women's wrestling. That's that's real wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. It's good stuff. But the, again, the cruiserweight shit. Like sure. Good match, but like, you know, if we, people think that's what fucking, like, that's not gonna fucking help Rassin people. We need some stories first, and then Rassin would matter. Uh, because if, oh, the Cruiserweight, <gasps> Cruiserweight made WCW. Fuck no. Like, listen, sure, the Cruiserweights were, like, were good in, in WCW, they were cool. But the thing is, people, for people who are claiming that was the main reason why WCW succeeded, is fucking retarded. What fucking helped WCW succeeded was literally fucking big stars like Hogan, Kevin Nash, and, and fucking Scott Hall. The NWO literally what made fucking WCW, along with fucking stars like Sting, fucking Scott Steiner, Jeff Jarrett, well, you know, Jeff Jarrett was in WWE, but, like, it's like, whatever. You know, guys like Sting, Ric Flair... You know, top motherfucker guys, you know, Booker T and shit, DDP, you know, all those motherfuckers. Goldberg! Holy shit, fucking yeah, Goldberg for fuck's sake, definitely. That, that's what made, not fucking cruising matches, but it's like whatever. But yeah, I'm not trying to say, like, it's not a bad match, but it's just like, for people that's like fucking pretending that's what, what wrestling's supposed to be, just a match. And all of a sudden being good. Like, that's not what it should be just about. It should be about the story too, people. But yeah, that's really what I don't gotta say. Um, yeah. Again, I'm the real motherfucker. Just keep it real. Gotta say I gotta say, man. I, I got big mobs. I got big abs. I got big black couch. I fuck your bitch on my couch. And drink soda and wine. That's magnificent. Cheers, motherfuckers. Until next time. Peace. Yeah, bye.